All right, I'll read this one, and it's a new little one. Um, <coughs> then we must go home. It's called the piercing cry going out over pastures. But I send it to people like Lou, and they always say, cut out the adjectives. <laughs> so I end up as a cry going out over pastures. I know it. Anyway, it's this poem. I love you so much for this curiously alive and lonely body. It is a young hawk sitting on a tree by the Mississippi in early spring, before any green has appeared on the earth beneath. I love you among my chest, where walnut hollows fill with crackling light and shadows. There birds are fed with water drops. It loves you with what it extracts from the prudent man hunched over his colony of lizards. And with that, it loves you madly beyond all rules and conventions. Even the six holes in the flute move about under the dark man's fingers. And the piercing cry goes out over the grown-up pastures. No one sees or visits at dusk except the deer. Out of all enclosures, who has never seen any bed but his own of wild grass. I first met you when I had been alone for nine days, and my lonely hawk body longs to be with you, whom it remembers. I know how close we are, we would always be. There is death, but there is also this closeness, this joy, when the bee rises into the air above his hive to find the sun, no, to become the sun. And the traveler moves through exile and loss, through murkiness and failure, to touch the earth again of his own kingdom and kiss the ground. What shall I say of this? I say, praise to the first man who wrote down this joy clearly, for we cannot remain in love with what we cannot name.